Olympic Games in 2010 are awarded to the city of Singapore. Yes. Yeah, uh, the most memorable moment for both you and the Joseph Martin in the games, notwithstanding the next time out. In the games, uh, I think it must be the the football matches. <laughs> um, Isabella, Isabella, the finals of the table tennis. Oh yes, yes, you know. Remember, she was down. It was, in fact, match point, mm. you know, championship point. I watched the way she played, and the spirit behind she played. You know, she never gave up. You know, you know that that kind of bravery and maturity in someone uh, so young, you know, is wonderful. And then I remember speaking to Rainer immediately after he won. You know, on the phone, he said, "Oh." I'm sorry I didn't get gold. You know, I realized these guys were going all out and they believed in themselves and were doing their best. Um, and then again, you know, before these games, I think most people hadn't heard of Shafinas or Daryl. And, you know, they're just quietly working in their own corners. They succeed. Uh, Dayat with his bull's eye just at the final moment. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, and pardon? Audrey. Audrey, you know, well, that's just yesterday. You know, uh, collecting um, a bronze. Um, again, you know, in sports, like I said, there are no guarantees, right? So you can be a favorite beforehand, but it doesn't work according to plan. But the point is. We now have athletes, not only with talent, but with, with the gumption and the spirit to go with it. So you can never tell which one of your athletes will suddenly pop up and achieve success. Uh, that, that, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing to see, you know, so to have been part of that. Um, but also equally important in sports, is how you handle defeat, you know. Um, so, watching our cups go down to Haiti, and then going to the changing room with them, and uh, you know, obviously, it's very emotional. They were all very emotional at that point. But uh, to be with them, to be able to say something to them, and made me more determined that I would be there yesterday, no matter what happens, because true support is measured when you're down, you know, not when after you've won the game. Um, and I was wondering, you know, would Singaporeans come out? And would they feel Jalan Besar and they were there? And so many of them stayed back all the way until the medal presentation. Uh, to, to cheer our boys. Another memorable moment, so yesterday after they won, I went down to congratulate them with President. Then their boys' main concern is, you know, can you get Jeffrey back? You know, he's in hospital. So that's when I decided, okay, I'll go down to the hospital, pull some strings, call the doc speak to the doctor, say, I, I want to bring this boy back to the stadium, can you do him quickly? <laughs> You know, get it done, and, and Tan Tok Singh obliged, and the surgeon obliged, and we managed to get him back in time for the medal. Um, but the key point is, it showed the strength of the team spirit. You know, uh, I think it was Sir Luck who said, you know, that, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. You know, and literally you saw all that last night, right? Blood streaming down his thing. Sweat, of course, we all got wet. <laughs> you know, and tears. Um, and what was most touching for me about the boys was that as they did all that, they acknowledged their, you know, their previous coach, David Sivalenga. Uh, so they did it for coach, for team, and for country. 
And that's such a wonderful, wonderful spirit. And I think because people can see that these guys are just playing for the love of it and for all these, you know, their emotions are completely on display. I think that's what caught the imagination and, of Singaporeans. And that's why I think and I hope a new generation is, you know, is born. And that's what we are seeing now. So many memorable moments. Uh, you know. I think for me, it's when they lost to Haiti and uh, mm. I went to the dressing room. Um, I, I saw Yaya, Kade Yaya first. He's a very strong person. First time I see him shed tears. Second time was yesterday. <laughs> he cried at the end. And, and and he said sorry. I don't think he should say sorry. And because I know them so well, I I hug each one of them. Every boy I hug and including Jita Singh, they all shed tears. But I think this is a it's it's about learning how to lose and how to pick yourself up. I think yesterday they proved that they have very strong will and uh, they have great leadership in both Jeffrey and uh, Kade and uh, team officials like Noah and Chita Singh to be able to bring the boys back together. Not only that, you have you know you have several people talk to them. Winston, you had Jocelyn talking to them. Everybody was concerned, so brought the boys back and they were able to deliver. There's a lot of pressure on them. Mm. You look at the starting 11 team yesterday, they were not the original starting 11 because Jeffrey went out, the captain. There were two suspended players and then there were injuries too. So we were not playing with our first full team. So you can imagine how much there was in them, the fighting spirit that they really want to deliver this for Singaporeans. Some of these are untold stories. Tukilan wasn't supposed to play in the centre, but Jeffrey's gone, so he's moved to the centre. Brandon Cole wasn't supposed to play in defence because he's always playing winger. He moved back. These are things you need a lot of belief in order to deliver the games. And he played even better to me. He played even better than the first games against Montenegro. It wasn't just the score, but it's the way they played it. I think second second memorable moment for me was um, Hamid's um, boxing match. Oh yes, yes. I think uh, he lost. I, I watched him because I, you know, boxing was one of the sports I was very concerned because originally when we win the when we won a bit and I was supposed to prepare this YOG team, Mister say at least got to deliver at least one medal. <sighs> I exceeded. You're not supposed to tell them that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that was public. That was public. I say at least one. No, no, no colors, no colors. Um, so, but but then again, that that boxing match, I I watched and then I was worried about boxing because um, we never had a boxer. Never so he was the first one at the world stage. He was against world juniors and world junior champion. He fought really hard. He inspired me because he went in there, threw the punches, and he he also took a lot of punches. But uh, he stood tall. He came out and tried to console him. But he was on the phone with the mom. He was crying away and talking to her mom. So I asked him, I said, Where, where's your mom? It's a mom's uh, Roger. Roger store. Cannot come. And my mom has never come before. So every time before or after a match, he will call. At that point, I was determined to bring the mom for his bronze medal match. I mean, I was determined, but I don't know how in what, because I know the mom was a very strong person. Single parent family, she brought up four children, and uh, and I had the help of uh, the association as well as uh, Mirza Mirza Khan who help out with the association now uh, to persuade the mom to close the store to come, because you know they are low income family and the mom if he, if she loses a day's of income then it's like the next day she will have a problem you know buying ingredients and putting food on the table. But you know what? She accepts no donations. She's just so strong. Say no, no, don't worry. I, you know, I will come watch my son for the first time. So to me, that was a very touching moment for me. It's very memorable. It makes it all worthwhile. All the hard work, 
the whole journey, organizing the games that I see that happen. Third one was, um, I thought I remember this because this volunteer impressed me. His name is Samuel Lim. Um, I was at the tennis center, so I came out. Now looking at the queue, as what well, Dr. Vivian will always do, look at the queue. We all are becoming a habit where you look at the queue and try to make sure the tickets sell fast and make sure everybody gets a chance to go in. There was a long queue. There was tennis finals. This mother came to me with a seven-year-old girl and came to me and said, Oh, um, Mr. Teo, and shake my hand. I thought I just want to take photos of what? Which it's not. Not everyone is. Not everybody wants to take photos of me. So okay, <laughs> that's fine. She's, and she looked a bit troubled. She said, "I actually bought the wrong tickets. I bought the tickets for yesterday, semis, not for finals." And and then uh, she said, "I actually let my daughter down." She said that the daughter was seven year old. She was she was tearing, crying. Because I look at her, not a single sound from her, just sad. And I, I talked to her, she, she just didn't say anything much. At the moment, I was thinking, your ticket is for yesterday, today. Then the queue is very long. And then the finals is sold out, actually. The queue was, maybe it's for the next match or for another day. So, I was, at that point, I was trying to decide. The volunteer that was with me, Samuel Lin, said, don't worry, took the two of them, went inside, went through the security, went inside, put them on the spectator stand. What does that show? Is he breaking the rules? Is he doing something that we should encourage? Because there's a lot of rules and protocols and all. And he just did it. And I just, wow. And when he came out, I said, what do you do that? He said, you know what? I cannot bear to disappoint this mother and daughter, especially for the seven-year-old. It meant so much to her. And I have to do this. He said, never mind. It's yesterday's ticket. I take it and I go. He said, so what if they, you know, what if they chase them? I said, they will never chase them. I'll stand beside them. And I said, what if they crash? He said, I'll take the responsibility. That is the type of spirit. It's a volunteer. I don't see that very often. I see that. No ticket, cannot go in. Go and queue up. Uh. <laughs> Too bad, you know. But not this boy. Mm. So I, of course, I, I, I thought that really left an impression. So I took photo of him and kept it in mind. <laughs> <laughs> to continue to remind me that we're doing these games for the people, yeah. for Singaporeans. Yeah. And I really hope that we have not let Singaporeans down. And that they are proud that uh, you for big games were here and proud of all the volunteers and proud of the organizing committee as well as all the athletes.